Thanks, Tiara. Uh, piece of piss, isn't it, really? Yeah? We all should be doing it. Um, my take from that is just get our shit together. It's tough. It's hard to do. But thank you very much. Very insightful. Um, next up is Matt Harris. Now, hopefully, he's going to talk about an art. And it's the art of decipher. Discovery, run hundreds of them. I'm looking forward to this. So please, Matt, up you come. Big clap, please. Thank you. And you won't see me again, so thank fuck for that, yeah? Hello, hello. Can I use this one? Does this one? All right, all right. Okay, so we've got two more talks. Mine's next. And everyone wants to get to lunch, right? So everybody can, you know, just wake up a little bit. I'll go really fast, I promise. I'm going to jump over here because I don't want to stand in the way. All right, that's me. Uh, I've been doing this for a long time. I have a company, Harris Webworks. I also have a brand called Verado, which is like thought leadership, podcast, newsletter, blah, blah, blah. It's all about digital transformation. It's helping older companies modernize. Our ideal client profile is manufacturers and distributors, 5 million to 1 billion. Um, older companies, 20 to 70 years old. And that's important for discovery because the discovery process with older companies can be very cumbersome. Um, we basically do integrated B2B commerce, systems integration, ERP, PIM, full stack, APIs, and third party integrations, and marketing, which is number six. So we're really like digital plumbers, back end guys, B2B guys. Um, we're not like a front-end marketing agency, even though we do that. We do it as kind of an add-on service. Um, one thing that I think everyone should know, and if you're in the space that we're in or something similar, our ICP is going to see massive disruptions over the next 10 years. Massive changes in ownership, strategy, and technology adoption. And our job is to make sure that they can make it through. So a discovery process is actually very, very critical for this. So in brief, we drive digital transformation, helping businesses fully embrace Industry 3.0 to unlock the vast opportunities of Industry 4.0, blah, blah, blah. Okay, discovery. Discovery is basically a goal assessment. So you could have a small discovery, you can have a large discovery, but somebody has a goal and you gotta figure out how to get to that goal. And that's not always an easy process. Um, I would say keep it to these five simple things to start. Now, if you're doing large discoveries and you might be doing two or three projects a year, net new projects, and you might be doing a few internal projects with existing clients, this is a muscle that doesn't get flexed a lot. So process is key, but process that you iterate on over and over again gets better and better and better. Sometimes processes that you don't pick up for a few months or half a year gets stale. So <clears throat> to reset, keep it simple. So basically, the five step process is start with the goal. Assumptions and questions like what is the goal? Then process and training. Who are the human beings involved in this project potentially? Who are gonna be the stakeholders? And then robots. So I'm breaking this down into humans and robots. Who are the humans? Who are the robots? The robots are basically the existing tech stack, uh, whatever technologies they're using. You're going to have to do an assessment of that depending on what the project is. And then the, the, fa the fourth step is what's the gap analysis? Where are they today versus where they want to be? How do we meet this goal? What needs to change with the current state to meet the future state of the goal? And then you start with expectations and, uh, and adjustments. At the end of the day, the discovery is about getting alignment on expectations. The expectations are the most important thing. Projects go bad 90% of the time because expectations are not clearly defined and then not met. So you have to understand what the expectations are. A goal can appear very simple at first, and then once you dig in, it becomes more complicated. The job of the discovery is to simplify that complicated process. So discovery. Start with the human beings. So I had AI make this and don't overthink this, but the humans look like zombies and they're very much afraid of the robot. So 
Don't ever think that. But anyway, start with the zombies. And there's kind of 10 points here. Um, who's the client? The client is basically the one that pays the money. So that might be different than the person that you're talking to. The person that you usually talk to first is your ally. This is the person that's trying to get something done in that organization. They found you, they're talking to you, and they're, they need you to help them. And need you, you need them to help you. That's your ally. That might not be the person paying the money. Then there's gonna be gatekeepers. Most of these organizations, if they're older, there's someone who's very invested in keeping things the way they are. That person is gonna block your progress. You need to know who that person is and you need to bring that person into the conversation. If you leave them out, they can screw your project up halfway through and it won't get done. So you really need to know like who that person is or that group of people or that department. A lot of times sales departments do not like e-commerce. That's a threat to them. So there might be a gatekeeper in sales that's like, I'm gonna be out of a job if we start selling direct, right? You need to know who that person is and at least be aware of that. Um, and then who does the client listen to? There's somebody paying the bills and there's someone that person listens to. It might be your ally, it might be the gatekeeper, it might be somebody outside of the organization. Could be another consultant. It's good to know who that person is, so try to figure that out. And then who does the actual work? So if you're trying to build a new process, let's say, implementing a new um, e-commerce system or a fulfillment process or a back-end system, because we get into all of that, there might be somebody who's actually gonna have a massive time saving and this project's gonna save them a lot of money, but the owner, the ally, and the gatekeeper, that they don't even know who that person is. So find out who's actually doing the work and then find out what do they want. So, you know, it, it sounds like a simple question, but if you're trying to make a process uh, re reduce friction, that may the, might be the primary goal. And then what do we think they need? So there's something that came to us they want, that's the goal, and then what we think they need is, could be completely different, so are they the same? And lastly, can we deliver on this? Is this, do we actually have a process or a service to deliver on that? Now the robots. So that's the human beings, know who those people are, and then understand what the technology stack is. So I break technology stacks down into four layers. You basically have your marketing tools, your customer retention marketing, your CRMs, uh, your product data, so like the big pool of data, which might be a, a, a third layer, and then your back office systems, your ERP. So depending on what the project is, it's gonna probably hit somewhere in this stack. So. The art of this discovery is what is the client's goal and what are their expectations? Do they think it's simple? What does the client need? Is that more complex than they think? What are the gaps? What technologies and skills are they missing? And does our agency's process actually solve that problem? A lot of times, you know, once you dig in, it doesn't. So an example. This is an example of why you need to do discovery, and this is where things can go sideways. Something comes in from sales, and it's like, hey, we have this great opportunity. A client wants a simple e-commerce website. Should be easy, right? Sure, sounds easy. You dig in, and you find out the client ships to 15 countries with five shipping methods, seven different tax rules, some orders are retail, some orders are wholesale, and others are quote request. They have a gazillion different payments, pricing, their shipping software is 25 years old, it doesn't integrate with anything, and the only person who can work on their ERP system is the owner's brother-in-law. Anybody experienced this? Anybody had this issue, right? And, it, and to get up to speed on this, what was supposed to be a simple goal, we have to now train the team on three new systems. So now you're breaking this down piece by piece and you're seeing, holy crap, this, is, this owner thinks, oh, we're just gonna spin up an e-commerce site and then you dig in, you talk to the stakeholders, you talk to the, goal, the gatekeepers and your ally and you're like, okay, this is not as simple as they think. So uh, this is a slide that I'll, I'm not gonna talk through, but basically, um, when you're thinking through a tech stack and you're thinking about the human process, 
you're going to meet up with this customer journey. There's you know six steps to the customer journey: awareness, consideration, acquisition, service, nurturing, and loyalty. Everybody in this room that's an agency and probably every technology company in this room is somewhere in this process. They're fitting a need somewhere in this six-step process. And then the technology that's going to meet those needs is the three below, which I would mentioned before. And then you can put data in there as a fourth layer. And then there's basically your steps and your touch points. So this is, if anyone wants to take a picture of this, this is kind of a, a good representation of how the it, technology impacts the customer journey. Um, so if we're going to break into uh, an assessment, so we're going to start a discovery process, right? Sometimes you just take a snapshot. This is like very high level. What are your technologies currently? And where is their level of readiness in those areas? So if you're going to do a retention marketing assessment or discovery, you might break in, break out one of these things and get way more granular. This is like everything, and this is just me kind of like throwing something together to show the way to think about it. But if you can break something down into small steps and look at each step and give it a grade of readiness, that's a good way to start. Um, and then, again, stair steps. So break it down into steps. So the, the example I had before, we're going to build an e-commerce system. Uh, that should be simple. And then we have all these blocks. Break those blocks down into each blockage. And then see if you can tear apart that and put some kind of plan in place for each step. We're going to need so-and-so from shipping. We're going to need uh, the brother-in-law for the ERP system. We're going to have to talk to that person. And we're not going to be able to do this all at once. It be, it, it'll become obvious. So the stair step is, until we replace this ERP system, we're basically screwed. So let's do that first. That makes the most sense. Or I think we can babysit this system for another year. Let's, uh, let's, let's update the shipping systems. Whatever that is, you know, break those down and see if there's a way to do it step by step by step versus all at once. Um, somebody gave an example earlier about a company trying to do everything at once, and it was a total disaster. I've lived through that firsthand. Um, one thing you should know, we do, ER, we do ERP, and we partner with people on ERP systems. So, and implementations, replatforming over to like an on-prem system to NetSuite. This is a stat that'll blow your mind. Those projects can take six months to two years. They can cost half a million to $2 million or more, and 65% fail. So imagine getting involved in a proje project you're a year in, the client spent a million dollars and they pull the plug. That happens all the time. And it's, uh, it's horrible. Like e nobody wins. Everybody's bummed out. So that's a failure of discovery. If the discovery process isn't tight and you don't get buy-in from all those people, the allies, the client, the stakeholder, and you start down this journey without a really solid plan and buy off on every step of the plan, those projects are going to fail. Now, as an agency, as a partner, that's your job. As a, as a tech partner, your job is to sell software. As an AG, agency partner, your job is to implement that shit. And it's your job to make sure that the technology, the part technology partner is selling can actually be implemented. And we all know the sales departments in technology companies want to get the deal but they're, they're not going to be in the weeds of the implementation. So your job is to protect both the client, the agency, and the tech partner to make sure that that discovery process clicks off all of the, those steps. So final thoughts. Don't force your solution on the client's goal. If your solution doesn't fit the client's goal, back out or find somebody else that can. So find another partner that can do it. 80% of your future leads will come from referrals. Your reputation is the most important thing, period. So you want your projects to go well. That's why you don't do what you don't do. Know what you do, do it well, and if it's not a good fit, pass or bring in a partner. Get a paid discovery. So <clears throat> internal clients that exist, we don't necessarily, it's just time material. So if we do a discovery process, we just book the time, book them, you know, and we, we get paid. If it's a new client and they're coming into you and there's something as complex as I mentioned before, and they're not willing to pay for a paid discovery, that's a red flag. 
And the other thing is once they pay for a discovery, they've got skin in the game. So you want this company, if it's a new client, to feel invested in you and vice versa. If they don't start paying for discovery, they're not invested. And now they can just like kick it around for years and nothing ever gets done and you've wasted your time. So it's a good thing to try to encourage that paid discovery. And if you can do some of the project and not all, bring in a partner. And that's why we're all here, right? So all ships rise. Basically, the complexity of what I described before, it's really hard for one company to do all that work. So you're going to need partners. So bottom line, the reason we're all here is that we all have something that can contribute to somebody else in the room, some other uh, agency or, or a tech partner. This is the discovery process. I'm not going to read through it. This is some bullshit that came out of like AI. Everything's different. Just do your homework. It, you know, it's, it's so much different to do like shipping software, ERP, e-commerce, marketing retention stuff. Know your industry, know your discovery process. But basically, if you start with those first steps, what are the goals? Who are the humans? What are the robots? I'm not going to talk about this shit. Uh, this is me. So that's it. I, uh, I thought I could make it fast. I hope that was helpful. And uh, thank you.